Hello. Hi, this is Nancy with On Point TV. I asked G Athena how it looked, and she said, I don't know. I can't tell until we go live, so I hope it looks okay. Hi, everybody. This is the beginning of a two-hour live segment. In this two-hour live segment, I will be doing two things right off the bat. One, I want to run through all of the books and patterns that I have on my website and how they're available. And I'm going to do that because at the end of this, I'm going to give you a promo code for shopping on Fireside Quilts, which reminds me, we better text Laura because she hasn't given me that promo code yet, but I promise by the end of the two hours, we'll have it. And after I show you all my quilts and stuff, then I want to talk, do a question and answer. So I got, I think, four pretty good questions from viewers from the email sent me and said, you know what, I've got a question. Can you help me with this, that, or the other thing? So I think that's going to be really, really fun. And then after that, I'll open it to the floor. So if you have any questions, and of course, we do have to keep them quilt related because that's the only thing I know an awful lot about. I don't know an awful lot about anything else, but quilts, I know an awful lot about. So we're going to start with just a review of the products that I have. So the patterns and books and notions that I have are all available on our website, which is onpoint-tv. So be sure that you go there. Um, you'll find all of these things and many of these things, and I'll let you know when I'm telling you about them, are available now. And they're either available in a print copy, which is gonna be full color print copy, or available as an ebook. Now, the advantage to the ebook is twofold. One, it's usually about 10 bucks less expensive, so that's a good thing. Two, if you don't print it, if you just keep it like on your iPad or on your computer to look at the instructions, all of them have links to the video that goes along with that technique. So if I'm talking about, you know, bias cables or something, and you're going, I don't quite get it from the book. I mean, I try really hard with the book to write instructions well, but if you don't get it and you'd like to see it in real life, you just have to click on that link and it'll take you directly to that technique video. In the printed copy, you can, it tells, you know, says go to episode 108 or whatever and stuff. And then you can always search things on the YouTube video. But honestly, the ebook does make it a little bit easier, which that's going to be kind of important when I tell you at the very end why I'm doing this to begin with. All right. So let's start with what I have on the website. And I'm going to start with honestly, the first product that we have, which is my pin cushion. This pin cushion I created because I could not find a wrist pin cushion that I loved. It had to be contoured, it had to be secure, it didn't want it top heavy, and it has to be able to not poke me when I'm using it. So of course, I created my own. So the first thing we did was create a pattern. So the pattern is not available as an e-pattern because with the pattern comes the piece of magic plastic. Now this is a plastic that I searched and searched and searched for and I found it and what's so cool about it, it is that it's heat moldable. So you heat it up with your iron. I like hover my iron or I use a hair dryer and then I can mold it right to my wrist. So it's the size I need it to be and then that creates the pin cushion. So along with the pin cushion goes the kits. So Gina is just coming in now. So if you hear the hellos just don't ignore her, but she's here. Okay, so then we decided to do kits. So there are kits available in all of these colors. The red one is, there's not very many of the red one left. There's not very many of the herringbone left. And I say that because I go out, I find a really good price on wool fabric. I, um, I, I wash it and felt, so I make it felted. That's what I do. And I usually dye it. Athena's giving me a look like, really, you don't know what that's called? She doesn't know what it's called either, I might add. But I actually felt it, and then I hand dye them. And so then there's all these different colors. There's even this kind of creamy, peachy color. The red one and the herringbone are very, very limited supply. Don't have very many of those left. Okay. So that was the first product we have. Along with that, we have these beautiful, speaking of Gina, seam rippers and awls. So these are the last four that she just made. So these are an epoxy cast that Gina takes down into her studio. She actually works at a place that does this also. And she does something on her lathe. I don't know what it is, but it makes them look really pretty like this. And then she takes them, I mean, look at that green. Isn't that gorgeous? Then in here 
is an awl tip, and you see me use my awl quite a bit in piecing, keeping everything straight. And then a very high quality seam ripper, not a little cheapy. He's very, very sharp and strong. So there's a green one, there's a red one. Online right now is a wood one and a couple of pink ones. So she just gave me these a couple of days ago because she just put them back up on the website. So you could purchase these on our website. All right, so let me put those away. Hi, Gina. Better late than never is what I always say. We're six minutes late. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. All right, so now I want to go through the books and stuff, okay? So I'm going to talk about that one in a second. So this is the Learning to Quilt book. This is the one that started it all. Keep in mind, I wrote the pattern more than 20 years ago, but it was only about three and a half years ago that we got somebody to actually do the graphics for it and everything. So it's it's a very pretty book, if I say so myself. And here's my favorite little part. <laughs> Look at that comb bounding. Isn't that pretty? A little pink. So when I do my comb bind, I always try to do them in a color. Look, Teresa showed up too. Give these girls a timetable. They'll be here sooner or later. Okay, hold on a second. So this is the learning to quilt. So there's Bill. Bill, come on over. Now he's... So if Bill's done with them, then if one of you guys could fold them up I'm, and put them away. I'm doing questions. Oh, okay. 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 So this is the learning to quote. So this is the one that we did all the way through, step by step. All the videos are there. So if you go to the very beginning of the videos, they are there. Every single technique. The rail fences, the nine patches, the cables. This is what I was talking about here, which probably is one of the more complicated parts of the whole quilt. And then the applique center, there are five or six different applique centers for you to choose from. So this is available on the website. Thank you very much, Bill, for being so tall. I guess I should thank God for Bill being so tall. Then this is the t-shirt quilt. So we only just recently put the t-shirt quilt online and it is only available as an e-book. It's not about coming over here, I think. Oh. Okay. Only available as an ebook. It's actually not available as a print. Um, yep, that's backwards. There you go. Now, what's cool about this is this is just not your normal t shirt quilt. The idea with this t shirt quilt is that you design all of these sashing pieces so the quilt goes together and it doesn't look like the plain you know, 12 inch square t-shirt quilt kind of a thing. You actually design it to be creative and to be your own. And since blue and orange seem to be Bill's favorite colors, and I only say that because if you look at his t-shirts, there was a lot of blue. Oh, green too, he says. <laughs> Blues and oranges and greens. So that's what I use to make his quilt. So the t-shirt quilt is available as an ebook on the website. Thank you, Bill. This is the Lone Star size chart. Now this is available in print and it is available as an E pattern. But point of interest, this is not a pattern. Writing the instructions for making a Lone Star, honestly, too hard. I could not do it. It was just too hard. So I made very, very detailed video instructions on how to do that. But what the size chart does is it takes you through all the different sizes that the quilt the quilt you can make for a Lone Star. For instance, a do 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 a this is a six by six. So this is a six by six quilt, which the center of it would then be 59 inches, and then you would put your borders on it. What you do with the size chart, there's the three by three. This is the four by four. This is the size that I'm going to show you on the quilt too tells you here how much fabric you need of each strip. Then it tells you all the rows. So these are your sewing rows. This is what it could look like, but this is the important part. You take, you're able to take your fabric pieces, put them where they belong so that you know your rows are not getting messed up. And then I'm wondering where my mirror is. It was here somewhere. Then you're able to take those diamonds and put those diamonds right down into the design so you're able to see what it looks like and I have my mirror and I can't remember where it is. Oh, I'll find it later. You see me use it in the video, but the idea, it's made by Marty Michelle. It's a magic mirror. You take that mirror and when you set it up on the diagonal like this, you can see exactly what your Lone Star is gonna look like. It's so, so cool. So while I'm talking, everybody will be looking around trying to find the magic mirror. So the Lone Star size chart 
is on the website. You can purchase that as a printed version or you can purchase it in e-pattern. Keep in mind the printed versions of all of these when you're purchasing them, that price does include shipping and handling. There's no additional charge, no tax or anything like that. All right, so this is the Lone Star. So we'll show you that one. So this just happens to be the one that I worked on during the recording of the um, episodes. And I tell you, I tried to be as detailed as could be. I've had people tell me that my instructions for the set in, tri the set in scenes, which are these here, were the best they'd ever seen. So if you haven't seen it, maybe take a look. Let me know what you think. Maybe you like it, maybe you won't. You'll never know. Thank you, Bill. All right, the next one is the Christmas wreath. So this is all done paper piecing. I do not have a video on how to make this quilt on the YouTube channel, but I do have a video showing how to do this particular paper piece block. The reason I do not have it available as a video is I do this class as a Zoom class. And it really doesn't make any sense that if I'm going to do it as a Zoom class, that I also do a YouTube video on it. So I don't want you being disappointed when you go to the channel and you don't find a video on this. That's only available for Zoom, and I'll do that again coming up, okay? This is available as a printed pattern and as an e-pattern, and it is in three sizes. Let me see here. So three different sizes, 22 inches. 22 inches, 36 inches, and 56 and 57. All of the instructions and the applique patterns for how to make that. And this is what the little guy looks like. So there's the applique wreath or bow. And I did the applique bow with needle turn applique in this particular case, which I do want to do another video on. All right. Thank you. And then this is the big one. I'll have Bill hold it up. So that's the smallest size one. This is the largest size one all right so this would be more of a lap quilt style honestly it's bigger bill's a big guy and that could fit his lap so that's a good <laughs> lap quilt style one all right i did do some quilting on that though so you can go back and look at the um youtube videos for how i quilted that all right next we have great basics now great basics is really a true beginner style book it's just a nine patch but it's not just a nine patch because, drum roll, brrr, it's on point. And everybody knows that every quilt is better when it's put on point. You make a nine patch it's just straight, it's just not nearly as exciting as when you put it on point. So this book is available, the sizes are this crib size or a twin size available in print or in the ebook. And Bill's going to hold this one up. He's probably getting tired. <laughs> So here's one version of it, and this particular colorway, the colorway, that one and the pink one, are available on FiresideQuilt.com. So if you want that particular fabric, you can actually get those from my friend Laura on Fireside Quilts, okay? And then here is another color version of it. And in both of these, you see the stripe, do you see the stripe, the stripe on the setting triangles and the corner triangles? So cool so easy so that means you're making a quilt that's your beginner quilt and all of your friends will not believe that this is your first quilt because you were so brave that you put it on point and you use stripes and it's not hard at all but people that don't know don't know and you don't know what you don't know until you know that you don't know it and they just <laughs> don't know it i don't know how i said that <laughs> anyways all right so that's that one so another one available on the website is the New York Beauty. So we have a huge series on New York Beauty, and the New York Beauty pattern is only available as an e-pattern. So this is the first one that is only available for an e-pattern, not in a print or, um, or as a Zoom class. So I've done this one, and there's a huge series of that. So take a look at that one. Yeah, yeah hand that one off fast because this one's huge. This is rail fences. This is scrappy rails, and I love this quilt. This is only available as an e-pattern, but what makes it very cool is all of the appliques. So we're going to have, oh, Jill, Bill and Gina are going to do this one. Oh, that is scrappy rails. So that is a twin size quilt, and it really, Gina, can you hold the halfway and then we'll lift it up so they can see the bottom applique? 
So all of this applique is included in the pattern. And I did that applique at the quilting. So I talked about that on the YouTube series for the rail fence. So all of this applique quilting, super easy to do. And I just think that's a really, really fun quilt. I love that. Thank you, guys. Then we did, oh, I guess I wanted to show this one twice because I brought two of them, Tranquil Stars. So this is a quilt that actually my sister Renee designed. She designed it. She was teaching it down at a shop in Illinois, right? In Illinois. Can't remember if it's Illinois or Indiana. If it's not Michigan, I don't know where it's at. So she lives down there. She was teaching this as a shop. She wrote the pattern, and I said, hey, how about I teach video on that? So I took the book, I went through and I did the edits to it like I would normally do. So these are the techniques I would use. So in this particular quilt, available as a print or an ebook, I teach you how to use things like the Rapid Fire Lemoyne Star, like Deb Tucker's V Block Ruler, the Easy Angle Ruler, the Easy One for the Tri, the Tri Tool, but, and the Block Lock. And then I also use my favorites. So I use my Omni Grids, my squares, and this little guy, which is my favorite of all my Omni Grids, my 4 by 14 So all the blocks can be made with these fancy tools, not saying they're good or bad, they're just fancy tools, or you can just use the tools that you already have. So all of those are on the videos. And let's show this quilt. I think this is the last quilt to show. So this is the colorway I did and some purples, pinks, that teal, which was really the accent color going around. I love that one. This one, my friend Karen Giles quilted and she put wool batting in it and just simple all over meandering. Nothing fancy on that. Just beautiful, simple, all over meandering. And that quilt is keeping me warm, trust me. All right. So that's kind of the series of what we have so far. But I have a couple of things that are works in progress that won't be available. Hopefully this first one will be, oh, wait a minute, I do have another one. Okay, the painted stars. So I have done, can you see that? Is there glare on it or not? Okay, so the painted stars is using the fabric that I painted. So there's a couple of videos out there. I'm also planning on doing one this Thursday on how to paint more fabric. It is really cool stuff. I've got a stash of them down here. I guess I should have pulled some of those out. But this pattern, the Painted Stars pattern, is available only as an E pattern. So you can find that there, right? Then these are two that are works in progress. So the first, I'm calling it an eight inch sampler, but that's like a, not a very descriptive name. So I'm counting on Gina to come up with something more descriptive. And it will be 41 eight inch blocks of course set on point because everything is better when it's set on point and let me show you the progress I have so far so these are all the blocks I have made so far oh can you see them so I don't know I've got maybe 35 of them made already I've got a few more to get made before I can put them all together but this is what the instructions will be it will be instructions this detailed for every single block, not just a, oh, this is how you make a half square triangle and then assume that when you get to the pattern, you're gonna remember how that was in the beginning of the book. Nope, each and every one of them will have the detailed instructions in the color that the block is on how to make that block. So this one, I'm just about 10 blocks away from having the pattern, the blocks made. I do have to get it beta tested by a couple of friends of mine, and then Teresa will put her final touch of beauty on it, and then we will have a new book. I'll let you know what Gina names it when Gina names it. All right. And then the last one, Gina yeah, Gina forgot she was supposed to be thinking about that. The last one is the one that I'm really super duper duper excited about. Oh, Bill left. Oh, Gina, oh, come here and be yeah, tall. Yeah, oh, okay. Wait, wait, let me be yeah. taller. Keep trying, keep let me trying. Be taller. Okay. This is Learning to Quilt 2, which also I want Gina to come up with a better name for it. <laughs> All right? Gosh, so, so much work. So yes. much thinking. So this is big. It's bigger than the original Learning to Quilt. Original Learning to Quilt is only 70 inches square. This one is more like a queen size ish. And I do have to add one little final two inch black border to this. This fabric is from Free Spirit 
from my friend Sue Penn, who is the designer of these fabrics, and she's got new series of fabrics coming out. I've got a friend right now, my friend Donna, is going to work on this. She's going to beta test this pattern for me in another one of Sue Penn's designs. This one will be harder than learning to quilt, as any two should be. So it'll have mariner's compasses, it'll have reverse applique, it'll have blanket stitch, quarter square triangles, Lemoyne stars out here on the ends, and New York beauties. And then it'll have lots of different coping strips on it. So this one actually, the base of it was designed by my friend Cheryl out in Washington. Um, she's been waiting for me to get this done. So that guy, he should be starting he should be available in 2021. We have not started the videos on it yet because I need to get it beta tested. I don't want to make a pattern that's got a bunch of errors, and I know that you can understand that. So there you go. That's what we have. That's what's coming up. Now it's time for questions and answers. So, oh, we're only 22 minutes in. That means we can have more than an hour and a half of questions. So I had four ladies that did send me questions, and I'm going to tackle her, their questions first. But while I'm answering their questions, if you got a question, ask it. All right, so Gina is manning the computer over there. She will let me know when there's some questions going on. But first, I'm going to tackle the ones that I already know about. All right, so there's one, two, three. Okay, I have another one. Oh, my goodness, you guys. Oh, there it is. I think there it is. Nope, that's not. I will find it. We'll find it. You guys, it kind of looks like this. It might have a blue kind of printing on it. Athena thinks she might know. Yes, that's it. Thank you. All right, so I have four questions. I'm sorry. All right, so the first one comes from Debbie. Debbie's a viewer, and I know she's been viewing for a long time. And she says she's excited about the show. Thank you very much. I hope you're watching, Debbie. And she's got some questions about interfacings. So I just happen to have just about everything she asked about. I got it. All right. So her first question was about soft and stable, and she said, Nancy, what is the difference between soft and stable and Bozal? Well, first of all, soft and stable is a brand, and Bozal is a brand. I say that because soft and stable is, they're not part of the big guys. There's a lot of big guys. Oh, Athena's going to sneeze, so Teresa's going to take the camera. Okay, so our camera might now go up a little bit higher because everybody's a little taller than Athena is. All right, so this is soft and stable. Soft and stable, I want to say, came out oh, maybe 10 years ago. It's been a little while. It used to be called headliner fabric because it was the headliner or headliner foam. It was used to be on top of a car for, for I don't know, if you hit your head, you hit a bump, maybe you wouldn't hit it so hard. I don't think this will protect you much. But this is what soft and stable is. Can we get really close? It's an eight inch piece of foam that has a Trico interfacing ironed on both sides of it. Trico is actually a stretchy interfacing. Um, I'll show you some of that, I think, too. Yep. So that's what soft and stable is. Soft and stable is the number one interfacing to use in any bags or purses that you're going to make because it makes the bags and purses stand up. They have stability. They're not crunchy. I'll show you what we were using before soft and stable. I used to have a couple of samples, but heavens to Betsy, I can't find them right now. But that's what soft and stable is. It is a fabulous, fabulous product. I absolutely love it. Now, Bozo is a company that makes lots and lots of interfacings, all right? One of the products Bozo makes is like Soft and Stable. It's an eighth inch foam with Trico on either side of it. I don't know the difference of it because I've never actually used Bozo's version of it, but I honestly assume it's the same kind of thing. Bozo is a company that came out also maybe a little bit more than 10 years ago, um, and it actually started by somebody that used to work at another very large vendor that used to make and manufacture interfacings, and some of the people left and started Bozel. So sometimes you might see some similarities to whatever that other company was and Bozel. The one thing that Bozel makes that I think is super cool is Timtex that's moldable. So this is going to be similar to how I was talking about my magic plastic, but I don't... 
I don't know, maybe it would work in my pincushion. I don't know, but it's not what I use in my pincushion. This is Timtex. See, so you see, Timtex is very, very sturdy. It's really cool if you're wanting to make quilted cards. So I've done a whole bunch of work with that before, and I might be doing some more. But with this particular one from Bozal, when you heat it up, it can mold. So I have back here, and it's not molded right now. Maybe I'll get Gina to turn my iron and I can mold it for you. But this is one that I did with that. So this is a re a feather pat. No, this is a leaf pattern. I stitched on the decorative edges here, and it's covered on front and back, right? When you heat it up, it's moldable and it stays that way. Now I'm gonna show you how to do it on this bowl, but I gotta tell you, I've done it on some costuming too. I used it to make some shoulder pads for a big co costume for a Comic-Con. This kind of stuff will mold. So that's heating up. All right, we're gonna have to come over here. So Teresa, if you could take the camera just so that she doesn't have to go up and down. I just wanna show you, I didn't plan on showing this or I might've brought it over. Let me just take this. Hi, now you get to see the big mess. This is, oh, this is the colorway. As long as you're here, I might as well show this to you. This is what the new Learning to Quilt 2, so I'm going to beta test my pattern myself. These are the fabrics that will be in the Learning to Quilt 2, the next one I make. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of these fabrics and kind of ball them up. Keep that there. My iron is getting hot. As it is getting hot, I'm going to run it over this heat moldable interfacing, okay? Get it nice and hot. And this was supposed to be a fabric mold. I guess I could put this online. Maybe this could be a free pattern online. I think I have it somewhere. While it's hot, mold it. Let it cool in your hands. Do 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 do, count to, I don't know. Count to a while. <laughs> Come until it's cool. <laughs> All right, it's getting there. It's getting there. And when it's cooled off, it will be as stiff as it had been before. So let me turn it this way and see if it's going to keep its shape. So you can see that it, I didn't let it cool all the way, but you see that it has shape and form. So that's what the Bozo Heat Moldable is all about. Okay. This is going to back up. I'm going to run in over here. Give you tea. Ta -da! The magic of television. It takes so, a village. It takes a village. Trust me, it takes a village to raise me. So this is the heat mosable. So that's one of the many things <coughs> that Bozal makes. Okay? So stay, Soft and Stable and Bozal are companies that make two different project, products, but Soft and Stable only makes the Soft and Stable. And she had some other questions. Is the shape flex woven and what what is shape flex woven and woven interfacing all right remember that t-shirt quilt i showed you t-shirt quilts need to be done using woven interfacing so that means if you look at this really closely it should look like a piece of white fabric it is a woven piece of white fabric that is very very lightweight now this is an exceptional interfacing when you're making garments. If you're making a garment and you want it to be top notch, this is what you use, but it's more expensive. So keep that in mind. This is what I use for t-shirt quilts. So this is what a lot of people think you can use for t-shirt quilts. This is your normal, regular, run of the mill, um, interfacing, fusible interfacing, right? This is what fusible interfacing does if you stretch it. It comes apart both ways and that's okay when you're making a garment it's still going to do the garment's going to do what it needs to do if it's a nice soft one but with woven it does not that's why this is the interfacing that you want to use on a t-shirt quilt a t-shirt is stretchy but like this little piece of stretchy that's t-shirt it's not stretching because it's on the woven fusible interfacing this is also called shape Flex, I believe Stacy's Shape Flex might be one of the names for it, but that's what that is. Um, the Bozal in our foam, oh, that's what I just had. That was an in our foam. That's the moldable, um, it's a mobile, mold, moldable, wow, Timtex. All right, so that's what that one is. Um, there's a lot of Pellon products. Pellon Decker Bond. 
Yeah, I got that. This is Pellon Deckerbond. Deckerbond is used in the decorating, more in the decorating industry, for um, just making things that need a really nice stability. It is a really heavyweight, not as heavy as Temtex, but a very heavyweight interfacing that is fusible. Next week, when I show do a painting video, so on Thursday we're going to do a painting on live, I'm going to paint some Deckerbond and show you how cool it is because when it's painted, it's fusible. You cut out your flower, fusible's already on it. You fuse it down, you're done. So even though it gets painted, the fusible still works. So I will use some Deckerbond on Thursday when we're painting. So that's what Deckerbond is for. Deckerbond is what we used to use in purses before Soft and Stable blessed us with their presence because Soft and Stable makes such a huge difference in purses. Before that, we used to use Deckerbond, sometimes a fusible um, polyester interfacing, but it isn't even close to as nice as the Soft and Stable in a purse. All right. Oh, this is another. This is a Bozel product. This one's called Splendid Web. This is a fusible interfacing, kind of like a Wonder Under, that kind of idea. But this is actually very, very good. So if you're looking for a very, very lightweight fusible, the Bozel Splendid Web is really, really good. Oh, this is the fusible polyester batting that we used to put in purses with the Deckerbond to give it some body. And... Then this is the Trico. I was talking about the Trico. This is the interfacing that seamstresses use when they're making something with a knit that they want it to have some body, but yet they want it to still be able to stretch. That's what the Trico is all about. So that is the answer to all of Deb's questions. Um, Deb's watching. Debbie's Debbie, watching? Debbie Kroll. Yep, Debbie. Debbie. Debbie's watching. Did I do okay, Debbie? I hope I answered all your questions. If not, send it to Gina now and I'll figure out what one maybe I missed. Oh, you did mention in here that you just finished your first quilt, but that you took out a lot of seams. Don't do it. Here's my big advice for beginners. Go forward. Yeah, make the block. Maybe it's not the size you want. And then you go to my YouTube video on coping strips and you learn to cope with the fact that the block isn't right. But don't take things out. Every time you take it out, you are stretching and stressing that fabric. Yeah, there is sometimes I take things out, I admit. But most of the time, I just make it work. So don't go backward. Don't take things out. Go forward. Just keep going forward. I guarantee you, every time you make a piece, it will be better than the time before. So there you go, Debbie. That's what we needed to know. All right. So this question comes all the way from Brisbane, Australia. Now, her name is Pauline, but it's so cute. Her nickname is Old Bag. I just feel bad calling Pauline the Old Bag. I don't know who, what you look like, Pauline, but I'll bet you're beautiful. And I'm thinking nobody should call themselves Old Bag. All right. So what she wanted, she wanted to make sure she was going to be able to see this later on. And I said, yep, it'll be there. So what she came to me with was a designing question. And I love this. She said she has a panel. So I don't know what the panel looks like, but she said it had a peacock in it. So she wanted to know how she could use that panel in a queen size quilt as you go quilt for her mother. So this is the design I came up with. So the idea is here's your panel, using some coping strips or sashings going around it, make it the size that it would need to be to fit in these blocks. Now these particular blocks, she said it was purples and blues, so I kind of decorated it. I did this in Electric Quilt. Electric Quilt is a program that I use all the time. All of my quilts are designed using Electric Quilt. It is the bomb. So if you've ever thought, I want to make my own, I don't want to keep using somebody else's patterns. Give electric quilt to try but be forewarned the instructions for the blocks are like this so this is what I'm gonna send Debbie I'm gonna send her that picture and I'm gonna send her this block so what it'll say is that those colors need to be cut two and a seven eighths inches and these colors need to be cut two and a half inches and that's it as opposed to when I write my instructions and I'm telling you, take that blue fabric and that white fabric, draw the line, saw two sides, press it, trim it, all of that. Which way to press? That's what a person that knows how to quilt does for you. That's what the patterns are all about. EQ is not going to tell you how to be a quilter. But they will tell you what size to cut your pieces for the 10-inch block that you want to make. All right? So this is for Pauline. There she is. 
Pauline in Brisbane, I hope you like it. I will be replying back to you, sending you the one block that I made up of the, just that simple design for, and then the pattern. And hopefully that gives you what you need to make that quilt for your mom. All right. Send pictures. Send pictures. <laughs> this one, oh, this one here. This one comes from Eileen. So Eileen wrote, and she said, I have been buying fabric willy-nilly, not knowing what I was going to do with it. Okay, raise your hand if you've ever bought fabric willy-nilly, not knowing what were you going to do with it, Gina. Is it Eileen L.? Eileen, she didn't give me her last name. In South Carolina? I don't know. She didn't tell me where she's from. Well, but anyway. Eileen might just have showed up. She might have just showed up. <laughs> so everybody, Eileen, has bought fabric. Do you want me to? Okay, come on over here a second. All right, Debbie says, thank you for answering all my questions. I think you should be a teacher at Fireside Quilts. I love that you're going ahead and doing I am the teacher at Fireside Quilts, Debbie. <laughs> so this is the fabric I bought with no particular purpose in mind. So they're all organized. I use it all, and I, I only give it away if somebody asks really, really nice. So all of us, Eileen, buy fabric that we don't really... Gina, out of my stash. <laughs> if she'd asked nicely, I would have let her have a piece. Come on back. <laughs> so Eileen says she's been buying camping fabric. What do I do with all the camping fabric? So I just went into EQ. Now, I did not have a real good picture of her camping fabric, but this is what I'm thinking. Three by seven inch rectangles using that three because what she what i could see in the picture was there there was some darks and lights so i'm thinking three by seven is a nice size so you'll be able to see what the design is on the camping fabric and it can just be done in half blocks which means the first row has a full block that's three by seven the second row has one half block and then the rest of them are three by seven, ending in a half block, and then a full row, half block, full row. Half. So I will send this off to Eileen. Eileen, I think this is simple enough to let the fabric do its job. You bought all that cool camping fabric, now just make something simple like this, and the fabric will do the job, all right? So the last one I have is from Jean, and I'm not sure where Jean is from either, Jean W. And she's working on a pattern, a Doug Leco in tableistic book. So the Soho table topper. So she's wanting to do a Soho table topper. Not sure what that means, but she's having trouble with cutting the 60 degree angles. She says she gets first cut done, but then after that, she kind of gets confused. So let me get a piece of fabric that will be noticeable. All right. And I'm going to cut this. The instructions, I do have them here. Said cut. Oh, it didn't tell me what size to cut it, but that's okay. I'll figure it out. So stay right there a second. I need a rotary cutter. I was pretty much prepared, really. Okay, all right. So first thing I'm always, always, always going to do is I'm going to square up my end. I've got now a square end. So now I'm going to spin it around. And I'm going to cut this three inches because I just don't know what size this particular one was supposed to be. So now I have a three inch strip. Now it needs to be cut. She needs some three different sizes, two and a half, four and a half, and seven and a half. And they need to be cut on the 60 degree angle. Now she did tell me that she has a Stripology XL ruler. I'm sorry, Jean, but I don't know what the Stripology XL ruler is. Um, I'm not one to buy rulers just willy-nilly. Boy, oh boy, will I buy fabric and thread willy-nilly, but not rulers. Rulers have to have a purpose, which is why I love my OmniGrid rulers, because I can make every quilt I ever want with just my simple OmniGrid rulers. She also said that she does have another brand of ruler 6x24 of another brand, but it's not an OmniGrid. This is going to explain to you one reason why I love the OmniGrids so much. The angles are all here at the bottom. Here's the 60. Here's the 45. Here's the 30. On other brands, you might get where there's a 60 down here and then the 60 up here and the 45 here and the 45 there. And they just kind of crisscross all over. Whereas I love that these are all right here at the bottom. So if I'm cutting the 60 degree, I'm going to take my strip. I'm going to turn it so it is now horizontally in front of me. I'm going to lay my ruler down 
so that the 60 degree angle, so you're just going to take that ruler that was straight and I'm just going to turn it so that now the 60 degree angle is on the cut edge. And I first cut off that first angle. All right. Now move your ruler aside, turn the fabric so I'm just like flat spinning it. So now that angle, because I am right handed, that angle is now on the right hand side. Now it said that she needed a two and a half inch. So that means I'm gonna line this up. So the 60 degree angle is down here and you'll keep, them, keep in mind the ruler, remember when I did my first cut, it was over here and I just turned it just like that. I'm keeping it just like that. I'm not even changing that. Nancy? Yes? You just said that angle was on the right hand side. The angle is on the bottom. Oh, okay, but it's on your left side. It's Yes, now the okay. angle is on my left side. I cut it, thank you. I cut like, it first on the right. Is it an opposite direction well, on the camera? that's what I was trying to figure okay. out. Now it's on my left hand side. There is, there is a wedding ring, so this is my left hand, okay? Now I'm going to cut that at two and a half inches. So there's a two and a half inch. Now I'm going to cut it at a four and a half inch, but in order to cut it at a four and a half inch, I need my larger Omni grid. So let me get another Omni grid. So this is my eight and a half inch Omni grid, eight and a half by 24. And there's all the rules. Look at that. 60, 45, 30, all right there. So now I'm going to lay it down. So I just keeping it at the same angle. My little ruler was here. My big ruler is going to be there. I'm going to slide this down so we can do it on the table. I believe it said now she had needed a four and a half inch. So again, I line the 60 degree angle up here on the bottom and then four and a half inches to the vertical. So right there. So now I can make that cut. And then it also said I think she needed a seven and a half, something like that. But I think you get the gist, gist of it. So now I'm going to move it over, keeping that 60 degree angle up on the straight cut at the bottom. I'm going to move it all the way over here to seven and a half inches. Now, I'm just occurring to me that she might have said that all she has is a six by 24 and she needs to make a seven and a half inch cut with a six by 24. All right, let me... Um, okay, I can get my hands on the 6x24. It's an Omni grid. It's not the brand she has. I think you get the idea. All right, there's my Omni grid. Let me cut another 3 inch strip because I think that this might be what's also causing her an issue is that if she only has this ruler, how is she going to cut that angle? I have my 8.5 inch ruler. It was a no brainer. So straight cut first. Now, Using the angle of the ruler, my eight, my ruler was straight like this when I cut, move my fabric to horizontal. Now tip my ruler just a smidge so that I've got the 60 degree angle here. Now let's see, how can we get the seven and a half inch cut? Did you notice that this ruler is six inches wide this way and 24 inches wide that way? That means that if we spin the fabric so now the angle's on my left-hand side. I'm going to use the angle. I know I can do this. I just have to think it through. 60 degrees, 60 degree there. If I put it this way, that'll go. All right, I know what I would do. All right, I'm going to put, oops, I'm hitting the gimbal. I'm putting that 60 degree angle on the straight edge. But she needs seven and a half inches. I'm going to slide this over. I'm going to grab a second ruler, doesn't have to be a straight one, it could be a square one, and add the angles together. So now I have, on the 60 degree at the bottom, going up on the vertical, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and a half. Using the two rulers together, I can get that seven and a half inch cut. So, if... Jean, if you don't have a second ruler to get that extra width, now's the time. You need to get yourself another ruler that's smaller. And I love this 4x14 four size. This is like my travel ruler. I go everywhere with it because he's small and compact and he can go everywhere with me. Um, whereas the 24s, sometimes those are just too long to travel with. So 
There you go, Jean. I hoped that answered your question. Yes, Gina, may I help you? So while we're on this topic, I've been writing questions down, but while we're on this topic. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm afraid people might not be able to hear you. Can okay. you come a little closer, sir, or talk a little louder? Oh, probably. Talk a little louder. Usually talking louder is not a problem for me. Yes. Um, okay, so while we were on this, I've been writing down questions, but there's one that I want you to answer while you're doing this. Okay. Debbie asks, why do right-handed people have to turn the fabric around? Why do right-handed people have to cut and then turn the fabric? Why can't we just cut on the other side? Because even a right -hand, left hander has to do the same thing. So if I am a left-handed um, quilter, if I'm going to cut, so normally I square off on the right side, so I'm going to just do this whole edge. Now I'm going to try my darndest to cut left-handed. If I cut myself, I'm not blaming you, Debbie. All right, so if I'm a left-handed cutter lining up on the horizontal angle, I'm going to use my cutter. Now I did not have time to change my blade. Love the old fuzz because I could take that blade and put it on the other side. And I'm going to cut my straight edge. Boy, left-handers, you guys are like super women. How do you do that? There we go. Whoops. I didn't get it all the way there on the bottom. Oh, golly, jeepers, creepers. I need to work. Okay, I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to cut this with my right hand. There. All right. So if a left-hander squares up their fabric on the left side, they still have to spin it around. So now, measuring from the left-hand side, they can measure three or however many inches and then I'm not going to make that cut because heavens and Betsy, this is hard. Um, they would make that cut here. So right-handers have to spin their fabric and left-handers have to spin the fabric. Keeping in mind, this is using my cutting technique. Now, there are cutting techniques out there. I'm not going to bash them, but they're not as accurate. And the idea is that they use the lines on the mat for their measuring. So if they keep it on the mat, then they'll just use the lines on the mat for cutting. That is so not the best way to cut. It is just not accurate. Um, you are always going to get a better cut when you're measuring with the ruler, not the mat. So there you go. All right, Gina, any other questions? Well, that answered Brenda's question. She's like, okay. why couldn't you just use the mat to have the extra? Yep, extra? there you go, Brenda. That's why. All right, what do you got? Questions? Okay, so uh, Brenda, all right, let's come up here. Should I bring the cat up too? No, let's not bring the cat up. Oh, come on. The cats are really cute. Nancy has two of the cutest and most enormous cats I've ever seen. Be nice. <laughs> They're huge. Um, okay, so Brenda said, and Brenda, I'm not quite sure what you're looking for here, so I'm just going to read your question. Maybe you were just pointing it out. You mentioned you have a farmer's wife, 1920s, with no directions. Yep, I think that I know there's um, quite a few books, like The um, Farmer's Daughter, The Dear James, that give you kind of the line drawing, you know, like something like this, and they don't give you any directions. So if you send me a picture of what that black looks like, I can recreate it for you in electric quilt. You know, there's um, hundreds of them. There are hundreds okay. and hundreds and hundreds of them. <laughs> but just something like that. Um, it's not that uncommon to make a block pattern where here's your block, and not put any instructions on it because writing instructions is really really hard it is by far the hardest thing i've ever done well except for cutting with my left hand that was really really hard kudos to all you super women out there that are left-handed okay okay zachary doesn't like cats that's tough zachary, zachary you just haven't met the, the best cat for you i have friends who are dog people and they get a cat yeah. you got to get a good cat is the no, thing he's you just walking have... away zachary my kitty's a little, little scared that you don't said say you little like about your kitty anyway <laughs> Okay. Exactly. <laughs> um, let me think. Uh, where did we leave off? I wanted to. Oh, okay, now this the one other here. Oh, I know. Okay. So Jackie asked about AccuQuilt dies, oh, okay. and she asked like which basic ones. Now Linda then stepped up and said that she uses strips, squares, and diamonds particularly. Yes. But she asked, how do you store AccuQuilt dies, and which ones would you would you recommend? Whatever die cutting system you choose. So I happen to have the Gemini, and the Gemini uses the thin wafers, which means they're very easy to store because they're so thin. I also have the Big Shot. The Big Shot is super fabulous because it's got dies of their own, triangle dies, which I've used in a series when I was doing Tranquil Stars. Okay, you guys quit goofing around. Uh, Zach my Zachary said bring the cat. Okay, I bring the cat. <laughs> 
Okay, move aside so I can answer her question okay. without distraction. So what I love about the Big Shot is the Big Shot has those basic dies, the squares, the strips, the triangles. But what's also really cool about the Big Shot, the Big Shot Plus, so it's going to be a little bit bigger, is that you can use the majority of the AccuQuilt dies in your Big Shot machine. So I don't have an AccuQuilt. I know it's a wonderful machine. My friend Renee up at Renee's House of Quilting in Williamsburg, Michigan, which when you're looking at Michigan, only we can do this. Um, <laughs> up here is Traverse City, and right next to it is a little town called Williamsburg. That's where Renee's House of Quilting is. Fabulous shop. Love, love, love that. Um, so there she is full range with everything AccuQuilt, all the dies. Um, then I also have the Scan and Cut. And the Scan and Cut is electronic cutting. How do I store my dies? All right, yes. this is kind of scary. Okay, stay put. Let me clean something, and then I'll let you come over and see it. Come on, my shirt. Oh, there's my Gemini. That was really heavy. This is the little... Ow! This is the little pad. Okay. <laughs> All right, Athena, come on over. <laughs> I didn't do too much more. Okay, Teresa's going to help out. Wow. I didn't do too much organizing than what it really <laughs> is. So this is this is an enormous light table that I got from our creative department. I used to work at Notions Marketing and they had a creative department and when they were redoing it all to electronic, they didn't need light tables anymore. So I bought this ginormous light table. Well, I do love it, but I love my portable ones better. But what I also love is it has a space under here. My son and daughter-in-law made some drawers under there. So this is my Big Shop Plus. Here are a few, of, now the, this is a Sizzix die. I can't use it because I don't have the Pro. I didn't think about it when I bought it. These are the AccuQuilt dies. So there's one of the AccuQuilt dies that I will be using in an upcoming live segment, probably in a couple weeks. I'm gonna use that one. And then these are the other, these are the Sizzix kind of ones. So this triangle one is the one that I used when I did the Tranquil Stars. There's my Gemini, and behind that, is my dies. There's my old small one. So that's how I store my thick dies. My thin dies for my Gemini are stored in that box and in this folder. They're all in there. So there's my, that's my junior Gemini and then my big one I just kind of set down on the floor. So there you go. That's how I store my dies. I know, not really nice and creative like my fabric, but it does the job. All right, going back. All right. <laughs> so and while she's coming back, I'm going to take over here for a minute, oh, just yeah. because I can. Um, audio. A couple people have mentioned about audio. You know, we do struggle with the lives with audio, because we're doing with this, this with an iPhone. Um, and we don't have a separate microphone on Nancy like we do with the studio shots. So we're relying on the microphone on the iPhone to... Um, capture the audio during these live things so we're if anybody has any ideas we're open to ideas it's just we have not yet figured out the the uh, the best microphone to use with live video so without please, please. spending 500 or more dollars but yeah <laughs> Teresa thinks she has a solution we're hoping it works and we're gonna try that we'll just try to talk louder okay cool Kay. next all right. question all right um Tips on working with flannel. Okay. And also, Nadia is in a very warm country and said, can she use flannel instead of batting? Now, it was replied that you have to make sure you wash the heck out of it to make sure it shrinks All depends. First. Yep. So keep in mind that your normal cottons are going to shrink maybe 2%. And 2% of a piece this big is that much. Did you notice it? No, you wouldn't notice it when it shrinks either. But flannels will shrink 8 to 10%. That means from here to here, you can notice that. So if you are making a quilt that is all flannel with a cotton batting, so flannel on the bottom, flannel in all of your pieces, then you do not need to pre-wash it. You can let them all shrink when you wash the quilt. And trust me, try it. Flannel on the bottom, cotton, flannel on top, do all the quilting, throw it in the washer, and it will be the coziest quilt you've ever felt. It just is fabulous. But if you are using flannel along with regular cottons, you must pre-wash your flannel so it shrinks. 
The only other tips I can give you for working with flannels is do not do a pattern like this that has small half square triangles. Flannel quilts should typically be done in blocks that are going to be larger and it's just because of that extra bulk. If you do a pinwheel like this with flannel, that center will be so thick. You will never be able to get your sewing machine through it. Well, I shouldn't say never. I'm sure somebody does, but it will be very difficult. So my biggest tip for making quilts with flannel is go simple. Go six inch blocks. Go half square triangles. Things that are simple. And if you're just doing flannel with flannel and cotton, then don't pre-wash it. Wash them all together. Can you use flannel in the batting? You can. Um, keep in mind that summer coverlets, so back in the 30s they used to do this summer coverlet kind of thing, they would make quilts with just the quilt top and just the backing and do the quilting through it, no batting whatsoever, summer coverlet. So maybe not do that's maybe what you need to do. If you want to use a flannel, you can do that, but I would pre-shrink the flannel first and then put it in the batting, okay? There is cat hair all over my cutting table. Thanks, Gina. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, uh, but you did get some cat love. They're, they're mm -hmm. liking the big, beautiful kitty. <sighs> and Zachary said goodbye. Okay. He's off to lacrosse. Goodbye, Zachary. Um, okay. Uh, Jada asked if there is a fabric quilt for... Quilt. Fabric kit, kit for Learn to Quilt okay. too. So my friend Laura at Fireside Quilts does have fabric kits available for the learning to quilt too. So that one using Sue Penn's big beautiful fabric, she has 10 kits. Three of them are already spoken for. We're not selling them yet, but she is happy to reserve it for you. So if you will email her at laura at firesidequilts.com and let her know that you just saw the learning to quilt too and you want to reserve a fabric kit, Go ahead and do that. And we might, she might ask for some money up front yet, but honestly, we're just so excited that you guys want it that we haven't thought that all the way through. <laughs> there. <laughs> nice. All right. Any um, more? That's, that's the end of the questions we've had. I'm pretty sure we've uh, answered. I've been trying to catch questions. I'd be going, oh, um, Jean would like you to go over the 60 degree triangles one more time. Yeah. I'm going to go back to my little desk. And you know what? I'm going to do these right handed this time. Okay. So. 60 degrees, so Jean, I'm not sure. Let me look at the pattern again and confirm what it is. There's the 60 degree cut, and then you make two, three additional cuts. One that's two and a half, one that's four and a half, and one that is seven and a half. So if you take your strip, cut it, and I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use just the six by 24, because that's what you said you had. You're gonna cut a, I don't know what size they are for the pattern, but I'm gonna cut it three inches. Got to make something now with a bunch of black three-inch strips. Okay. Open that up. Now, the, I took my cut, was here. Now I'm laying it down horizontally. Now I'm going to take my ruler that was here. Here is my 60-degree angle, and I'm just going to turn it. So now, let's see if we can get that really close. There's my 60-degree angle on the straight edge of the strip that I just cut. Cut that edge off. After you cut the edge off, lift your ruler. Let's just say you just lift the ruler. Spin the fabric around. Now, the angle that you just cut is on the measurement that you need. You need a two and a half or two and a quarter inch strip. The, there's the two and a quarter or two and a half, and here's my 60 degree, right on the straight edge like it was before. Going up here, here's my measurement. That's the two and a half inches. So you've got to keep the 60 degree angle on the straight edge of the strip. And where we ran into the issue using two rulers is because you had said that you only have a six by 24. So for something larger, you could do a six inch. Here's six inches, lined up on the edge, six inches, 60 degree angle, but now grab a second ruler. So if you move this over, I can now add the two rulers together to get seven and a half inches. So Jean, please, I hope you're still Nancy. there. Did she say? No, but yes, yeah, she's still watching. But are you measuring from the very bottom corner to the very right corner? 
Let me show, let me show, because mm -hmm. when you're pointing, it's a little hard to see, but, so are you measuring from right here oh, to right here? Yes. Or right here to yes. right here? So, so if in you the follow, middle, that, that was a little confusing. Yep. If you follow the 60 degree angle on your edge of your fabric, and you add up the inches, so you could even go horizontally across, but it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and a half. That's a seven and a half inch. What's most important, Jean, is that you keep that 60 degree angle on the straight cut. Your measurements still come across the width of the ruler, and but that angle cut is right underneath the ruler. Can you see that? Can you see it good? It, well, it's a little dark. The, can, do you have a piece of white fabric? No, but I can move this mat off and use the big old mat underneath. Yeah, there you go. It's the black doesn't show through the I could pull my green one out, but my green one has got painting stuff on it right now. Oh, yep, I just saw another way. Oh, this might work better. Okay, I'll, get I'll get my OmniGrid spinner. Because this is, yeah, my big mat's kind of covered up with stuff. Okay. There's the straight edge. Now what I what I love about this root mat is that it spins. What I don't love about this mat is that it can't make the lines go away. So I would like to make the lines go away, but I can't. So, all right, so here we go again. Oh, that's better. 60 degree, right here on the straight edge. Now using my second ruler, line that second ruler up. And I do like to keep the two 60s. Here's the 60 from my smaller ruler. Continuing the 60 on my larger ruler. Seven and a half inches. That's good, Jean? Yeah. All right. Better. Cut. All right. We're good. All right. Uh, Debbie wants to know if we have the orange guide strips you put on your sewing machine for a quarter seam allowance. I do. Those are called guidelines for quilting. Hold on one second. Other side. I'll just bring it over. Okay, here's my notions toe. He says all my notions in it. This happens to be what I was, you can purchase it from FAF. So it's from my FAF. So when I bought my FAF icon, at the time they were doing that, they also, this was one of the free gifts. So it holds lots and lots of stuff. Now, if you're interested in a tote bag like this, I know that Tim at Smith Owen Sewing Center, that's the quilt shop that I teach at here in Grand Rapids. He happens to have these because he's a FAF dealer. But what you're talking about, are the guidelines for quilters. They come six of them in a pack, and this is what I use next to the foot on my sewing machine. So I move my needle over so that from the right hand edge of my foot to the needle is a scant quarter inch. Then I put my guideline, which has a sticky back, right next to that foot. So these are available on fireside quilts also, okay? Anything else? Jeans no, thinking. we are at the end of the questions. Yay! That means that we only made it go one hour, so that's good. I kind of like that. That means I can have some lunch. Um, so you can come, still come up with questions because I'm going to talk to you about what my plans are for this upcoming year. You may or may not know that I used to have what I would call a real job where I had to actually go to an office I had to put on my fancy shoes. That actually was optional. I just liked wearing fancy shoes. Um, and go to the office and sit at a desk. And I was a sales rep for um, a large distributor of arts and crafts supplies, which seriously, if I've got to work in an office, that really was the place for me to work because arts and crafts supplies, that's what I do. But I left that job. I actually re early retired. I'm not quite old enough to be official retirement age, but God blessed us with my husband having a real job too. So I've got health insurance, so don't worry about me. But I don't have a real job anymore. So my real job had been to travel and teach. And, and that's what I wanna do when I grow up. So if you are part of a quilt guild or if you own a quilt shop and you would like me to come and teach at your shop or your quilt guild, well, once this COVID thing is over with anyway, I will be happy to do that. But with COVID happening, I didn't get to do all the traveling that I wanted to do. So that got me thinking that maybe I needed to come up with some other ways to connect with my viewers. So there's a lot of you out there and you have lots and lots of questions and you want help with lots and lots of designing. So I have decided to start what is called YouTube membership. 
This is something since all of you already know how to use YouTube, I decided to use the YouTube membership. There are other platforms that I could have chosen, but you're already on YouTube, so it kind of made sense to me to stick with the YouTube. YouTube membership means that you pay a subscription fee. So things like this, this event, the question and answer, where I'm designing quilts for people, where I'm answering questions, answer, ask the question, I will find a way to answer that question, will now be part of the membership. So the membership will be, five, I think it's $4.99 a month. It'll be a subscription that'll last for an entire year. So I'm going to have three different levels. I'll tell you a little bit more about this when it's actually live. It's not live yet, so you can't find it. But I would like to know if this is interesting to any of you. Um, the first level will be this. I will do a two-hour video once or twice a month. And in that, you can send me questions like Pauline did, where I designed her quilt for her. So two times a year, you could ask me to design a simple quilt for you. Then you can be part of the two-hour question and answer. So normally, we won't be doing this on regular YouTube. You'll have to be a member to be able to get the question and answers. Then the second level is what I'm going to call the designer level. That means that I'm not, not only do you get to be a part of the question and answer with that, but it also means that if you have purchased Electric Quilt and it's still sitting in the box and heavens to Bessie, you're trying to figure out why you bought it in the first place, I'm going to be there to help you. Using the Zoom platform, I can be sharing the EQ screen so I can help you do any designing questions that you have, plus give you those tips and and some instruction on how to use electric quilt. So that would be the level two, what we're going to call design. Sign me up. Okay, thank you, Debbie. <laughs> the third level, the reason I went through all my books and patterns, is the third level, I'm not sure what I'm going to name it yet, I'm waiting for Gina to come up with a great idea. But with that level, you'll be able to be part of the question and answer, you'll be able to be part of the designer series, and you will get Every ebook or pattern that I publish, you will get those for free. So when you sign up for the final level, which will be twenty dollars a month, Jackie's you will ready to sign up for okay, the middle one. Thank you. Um, you will actually get all of the existing e patterns. So the e pattern, the e book, learning to quilt, great basics, the um, the Christmas wreath, the Lone Star size chart, all of those that I talked about that are e patterns. You'll get those all, and then as I come out with more, like the 8-inch sampler and the learning to quilt too, and you know I've got to come out with more patterns as I'm going, you will get all of the e-patterns for free. So that's kind of what I wanted to introduce today. Now what I don't have yet is my friend Laura has not yet sent me the promo code for the Fireside Quilts. So in the description below, once we go off air and this gets published on YouTube, I will make a comment. Be sure you find that comment, and I will tell you what the Fireside Quilt promo code is for you to be able to go to Fireside. I forgive her because she's moving, and that means she's got to move her entire warehouse and her house and everything. So, Laura, I wish you had called me. We should have called it earlier, but as you can know, I, as you can tell, I fly much better on the seat of my pants than I do in anything that's planned. So, any more questions? Cheryl says, thank you for the left-handed explanations. It's very hard. I don't know how you guys do it. Diana wants to know if you do any art quilts. I do do art quilts. I said do do. <laughs> um, I do art quilts. Um, usually they involve my painted fabrics, the things that I do with my painted fabrics. I have coming up a class at Smith Owen on doing improvisational piecing. I don't have any of those quilts here because they're actually hanging at the store right now. But I do plan to do improvisational piecing as a Zoom class. So if you're interested, I'll be sending an email like I did to get to you guys this time, and you'll be able to be part of that Zoom class on doing improvisational piecing. Remind everybody to make sure they're signed up on Facebook so that they oh. get some of those notifications. Yep. So we do Facebook notifications, and honestly, it's the easiest way to contact you. I was able to do the emails through my the, my friend Laura's Fireside website, um, but writing emails is a little harder. It's a little bit more time consuming. So I really do things first on Facebook, although this time I didn't because I posted it to the wrong Facebook account. Please forgive me. But normally, it's just easier to announce things on Facebook. So please go to Facebook, search up On Point Dash TV, or I think if you even search up Quilting with Nancy, I think you'll find us there on Facebook. We have an Instagram and a Pinterest, but honestly, I just don't do those very well. It just 
you know, Instagram is for an instant, you get to see a picture and then it's gone. And I kind of like where you get to see it longer. So that's, I, Athena's giving me the look like you're just too old, Aunt Nancy. You're just too old. I didn't say it. Maybe I am. And I like Pinterest, but Pinterest is just full of ideas and ideas and ideas and ideas and ideas. And I'm sorry, but my head just swelled. I just couldn't take it anymore. So we'll try to, Teresa will try to do some more Pinterest and Instagram stuff for us. So any other questions? Debbie has asked if the Zoom classes are included with the top tier. Um, you know, that's a really good question, Debbie. I don't know yet. I'm going to say I don't know yet, but you know what? I've never thought of it before, and I think that's a really good idea. Mm -hmm. That is a really good idea, because if I did three or four Zoom classes a year, I mean, that would totally cover it for your subscription, plus all the e-patterns. So, yeah. good idea, Debbie. Thank you. <laughs> Spot on. That all right. Last what? call. Last call. Any other questions? I wanted to show you my other cat, but he won't come down, and Zach's not watching anymore anyhow, so... All right. Let's call for questions. I just posted oh. it there. All right. If you have any questions that did not get aired today, go ahead and email me, quiltingwithnancy at gmail.com. But do know that when the membership, you know, with that membership starting, I'm not going to, I've had in the past people call it writing and saying, I've got this block and that block and how do I make it into a quilt? And I've been able to just go on EQ and send it to you. It takes a lot of time. So that's going to be part of the membership. So I won't be able to do that anymore. But if it's questions like, what brand did you use? Or what was that silly thing that Gina said? I'd be more than happy to answer those questions for you. And if you got any more, just please send them to me. Quiltingwithnancy at gmail.com. It can't get any easier than that. All right, we're done. Have a great day.